Uh, Daniel Marins, as far as, you know, the, the, there was so much, there's so much great things about the reaction this week. And again, to me, taking action, you need leadership and you need to engage the people around you. And I just thought that President Obama's leadership, the FBI, the police engaging fellow citizens, those were crucial roles in terms of bringing this to a conclusion. Daniel? Well, I'm uh, Daniel Marins. I'm not, I'm not exactly yeah, hearing you, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll solve that problem. And um, we'll bring in Daniel Marins in. But there was, you know, folks, again, if there are any lessons, that, uh, large lessons that we can all draw from this, uh, and you think, well, Take Action News is a show about, you know, how do we influence outcomes? How do we engage people? How do we convince people that you can make a difference? Classic examples, textbook examples, just from what happened in Boston. The effort, of course, the, 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 what everyone wanted to influence is they wanted to bring this to a conclusion. They wanted to stop the carnage. And so, what, of course, there was the leadership element from President Obama. And then there was the effort by Boston police and state police and the prosecutors and the FBI to engage the public, to get the public to help. And indeed, it was a member of the public who, in Watertown, Massachusetts, who thought, okay, you know, I'm going to go back and check on my boat just to see, you know, I haven't been outside of my house, but just check and make sure everything's normal, who saw that, in fact, there was blood on the side of the boat, pulled back the tarp and saw that suspect number two was, uh, was inside and then called the police. Uh, and again, it takes that sort of community engagement oftentimes in order to be able to get the right result. Uh, this week was also memorable for another, another uh, a thing that I think will stay with us for a long time, and that is our trust in the media. This was not a great week for, uh, for some media organizations, particularly for CNN, which in a very sort of bad way uh, got it wrong on Wednesday, uh, suggesting that they had exclusive information that the suspect, a suspect, uh, was under arrest and was in custody. Here's CNN's John King in custody i could not get further answers you're getting more information exclusive reporting what else are you learning uh, that an arrest has been made yeah. in the investigation so the here in boston that was identified okay. has now been arrested and, and, and we would assume that i've just been told that an arrest has been made an arrest has been made in this investigation a dramatic a dramatic shift in a Dramatic shift in this investigation, and then within an hour, CNN's own course, Justice Department correspondent uh, had to chime in and say that uh, essentially that John King and CNN, the so-called network of record, uh, had gotten it wrong. Here's Joe John. Wrongfully, I have talked to uh, a pair of uh, highly placed Department of uh, Justice officials, and um, uh, they both tell me that uh, no arrest has been made. It, it appears that uh, no one is in custody as, as far as uh, they can tell. I was told by one of these officials that they had actually triple checked. So no arrest has been made. Uh, no arrest has been made. No. All right, and if that wasn't bad enough, uh, the other problem that John King had, in addition to getting it wrong, and clearly he was wrong, and CNN was wrong for an hour, was that John King, that the little bit of information that he was trying to sort of give out, that he was trying to report about this uh, suspect that he claimed had been on arrest, he gave a characteristic that was uh, really, uh, in many ways, inappropriate. And I'll explain why after you listen to this. Here's John King. By one of these sources, who was a law enforcement official, uh, that this was a dark-skinned male. Uh, the official used some other words. I'm not going to repeat them until we get more information because of the sensitivities. Okay. Now, here's, here's the problem. Let's start with that last issue first. When you're a reporter, right, and you're trying to provide information about a suspect or somebody who's wanted, and you as a reporter are perhaps trying to help the public engage in this, you cannot provide just one little bit of information that essentially makes half of the city of Boston a suspect. There is nothing that you do in pushing the ball forward and reporting the story forward by what John King did. If John King had said, I'm told that he's five foot ten, that he was wearing a white baseball cap, that he was carrying this, that he was dressed like that, that he had short hair, and this is the complexion of his skin, okay, maybe that's a little bit more reasonable. But for John King to simply say, oh, he's a, he's, you know, what he did, uh, that he's, uh, he's a dark-skinned male, uh, th there's no purpose that is served by that. And for that alone, I just wish John King would come out uh, and apologize uh, and, and, and acknowledge that he messed up because there was a borderline you know, racism, if certainly racial insensitivity by doing that. I mean, if, if John King had been told that the suspect was Jewish, and that's all that John King said, certainly our Jewish friends and, and relatives and family would be infuriated. If John King had said, the suspect is Asian, and that's all he had said, 
that would also be infuriating. So I hope everybody can understand why what John Key did in terms of the complexion of this guy's skin, when that's all he put out there, in addition to getting it wrong, of course, that the guy was under arrest, why that was such a big issue and why it was so frustrating. And then again, regarding the overall getting the story wrong, I have been there. I have been in cases, in high-profile cases, where you're told some information, you're under incredible competitive pressures to get something first, report it first, so that your organization can lead the way in the reporting. But particularly, particularly under those circumstances, you have to be careful and you have to be sure that your sources are accurate or you have to be able to attribute your sources on the record if you're not sure. And if somebody is telling you some information that is then wrong, you have an obligation to go back and say, well, here's why the information was wrong and apologize for it. And I think, you know, CNN, we need CNN with the kind of organization that they are, the resources that they are. We need CNN's credibility to not take hits. They have more resources than most news organizations combined. We need them to have journalistic integrity and not be compelled or not be tempted by the competitive nature of this business to somehow make a name for themselves. CNN should be making a name for itself by having more resources than anybody and by being accurate and by being sober-minded the way CBS News was this week. CBS News provided some of the most terrific coverage, and they were thoughtful. Uh, they were not speculative. And they provided the information that they knew. And when they were asked to withhold certain information from police, they did that because they wanted to aid the investigation. So those are just my thoughts on how the media handled this and also uh, thoughts, of course, on what I thought were the crucial moments this past week. Taking action, you've got to show leadership, and you've got to ask people around you to engage. And both of those were on display in Boston. Coming up, we're going to revisit a topic we, uh, we did last week. Uh, we had an interview with Mumia Abu-Jamal, who's in a prison north of Philadelphia, allegedly for killing a police officer some 31 years ago. We're going to talk to one of his defenders. Take Action News continues after this. 